Transgressing Time, Space, Indigeneity, and Science. My name is John Nichols, and together with my colleague, Leisha Dillon, we are based at Trinity College in Dublin, and we represent the Four Oceans Project. The Four Oceans Project is an ERC-funded synergy grant running from 2021 to 2026. Now, before the Industrial Age, the four oceans exploited by humans were the Pacific, the Indian, the Arctic, and the Atlantic, hence our acronym, Four Oceans. Oceans have mattered in human history. But how? How much? When? Where? And with what consequences for societies? To address these kinds of issues, we pose several research questions. Our first research question is when and where did marine resources become of major significance? We also ask what forces drove and constrained marine exploitation? Finally, in terms of synergy, we combine these concepts together to ask the question, what were the consequences of marine exploitation? Ultimately, our discoveries and outputs, including our World Atlas of Historical Marine Exploitation, will influence virtually every humanities and science-based discipline touched by the sea. They will also inform the UN decade of ocean science. In terms of a focus for the project, we are looking at specific species, including whaling, which is what we will address today, but also there will be seals, walruses, various types of fish, and other marine animals. Now, the word transgression or transgressing does seem to have some negative connotations. However, in this instance, we are looking at the more flowery term of trans or bridge, which enables us to bridge the gap between. And here we're looking at the two areas, the two polar opposites of history and science. Our ambition is to make sure that we transgress that gap and close it. And to this end, what we're looking to do is address the concept of time, which is an historical placement, the concept of space, which is the geographical location globally, and together these form the spatio-temporal aspect of our research. We look at indigeneity, which is addressing the local or domestic development um, on a minor scale compared with the industrialization, which overlapped and all but eliminated the indigenous concepts that we address. And then we look at the science, the historical qualitative data that we have being converted into scientific quantitative data. In terms of global whaling, we have a broad overview to present. Here we may look at over half a million records, or roughly half a million records. The collection and collation of existing and new research is our method of obtaining these records. And there are variable scales of data in play. So we have sources uh, such as the American World Whaling, which is based on the HMAP or History of Marine Animal Populations data. We have expanded this largely. We're looking at British Arctic whaling, British Southern whale fisheries, French, Dutch, Portuguese, Scottish, Japanese, Filipino, and Norwegian data. And importantly, there is far more to come. So at the micro scale, we present to you a case study of whaling records from Greenland. This is a small, unique data set that showcases the complexities that can present themselves when converting historical information to findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable data. The data that we have is a small number of records detailing the quantities of whale and seal oil traded by Danish companies in Greenland between 1721 and 1807. This is valuable data as it represents whale and seal catches that to our knowledge are not recorded anywhere else. Other information recorded are numbers of seal skins, baleens, and the number of Danish whaling vessels that were operating in Greenland per year. Although our source contains valuable catch information, it also reminds us that working with historical records can be difficult as there are often inconsistencies and ambiguities. For example, our source does not explicitly state the number of whales caught per year, but instead tells us of the quantities of oil traded in Kvardal, a historic measurement. Therefore, we must convert Kvardal into litres, then estimate how many litres of oil on average was produced by one whale. This could vary depending on size, sex, or other variables, which makes the resulting data less reliable. Also, seal and whale oil were counted together until 1777. After this period, whale oil was counted separately, so we're left with the dilemma as to whether we should include the prior years in our whaling database, given that it was likely that much of the oil traded came from seals. Also, our data is sourced from trade figures recorded by the Royal Greenland Trading Company. 
this company had a monopoly on all trade in Greenland, uh, so we can assume that their figures count for total production minus domestic consumption. However, we also know there was an, a considerable amount of illicit trade, both with crews of Danish ships and with crews of foreign uh, whaling ships. So um, we don't actually have a full um, picture of our data. Inconsistencies aside, these trade figures present valuable information that should be converted to a form made usable by others and shared. How do we do this? Uh, first, we use the International Biodiversity Standard Darwin Core. When the data has been converted to Darwin Core, we can upload this to OBIS where others can access and reuse our data. One long-term goal of the Four Oceans project is to create a world atlas of historical marine exploitation, which will be accessible to all. We try to provide some common layers of data in Darwin Core, such as location, event, and occurrence records. However, this is not always immediately possible with historical data because some information needs further research or resolution. This can be due to the heterogeneity of our sources, for example, the quantities of oil provided in the Greenland data versus typical catch data that provides information on precise location and depth for each whale caught. Additionally, some valuable contextual information does not currently fit into Darwin Core. In these cases, uh, we would use the extended measurement or fact extension. Uh, on the left of this slide is a screenshot of the raw data that we are working with. On the right is an example of our desired end result for the data, which is to publish the data set on OBIS with each data point recorded as an occurrence. So what we can conclude so far is that when compiling a database of historical global whaling, we can expect to encounter many sources and data types. Um, all are valuable, but common challenges include finding a method to standardize such heterogeneous data, how to confirm our unverified sources, and how to convert qualitative information to quantitative catch data. Um, we are already working on certain pathways uh, to solve these challenges. Uh, these would include um, enhanced communication with research centers, scientists, and other stakeholders by fact-checking uh, through using multiple sources and by using the global biodiversity standard Darwin Core. Uh, so thank you for listening to our presentation. Uh, this is a very quick run through of the work that we are doing, but we would love to hear any questions, comments or thoughts at our emails below. Thanks.